Hey guys, today we're going to discuss indeterminate forms and L'Hopital's rule. So learning objectives are, we first start with discussion of indeterminate form 0 divided by 0, and then we will uh, introduce the L'Hopital's rule, and then we discuss the other indeter indeterminate forms such as infinity over infinity, infinity times 0, infinity minus infinity, and finally we also consider indeterminate powers where we have 1 to the infinite, 0 to the 0, or infinite to the 0. All right, so let's get started. All right, so why do we care about indeterminate forms? Well, often when we take limits, like uh, you can see here, limit x goes to a f of x over g of x, and if f of a and g of a are both 0, then what we'll have? We'll get 0 over 0 occasion, right? So that's what we call an indeterminate form, and uh, in this uh, section we will discuss how to handle such indeterminate forms. So before we proceed, let's give a few examples. So uh, for example, we have 3x minus sine x over x. So if you let x go to 0, what, what do we have here? What do we have here? Well, we have 0 minus sine of 0 divided by 0. Well, this is like 0 over 0, right? So this is an indeterminate form, so indeterminate form, right? So it doesn't mean that the limit is undefined or something. It, it just means that uh, we encounter an indeterminate form 0 over 0, so we have to do something, right? So we will do something. Uh, another uh, occasion is here, so square root of 1 plus x minus 1 over x. Again, if you let x go to 0, the numerator goes to 1 plus 0 minus 1, the denominator goes to 0, so this is like again 0 over 0 in the term form, right? And another example is, so uh, theta goes to pi over 2, then what happens? Here uh, we get 2 times uh, pi over, over uh, 2 minus pi divided by cosine 2 pi minus pi over 2, so at the, at the top we get 0, at the bottom this is a cosine uh, 3 pi over 2, which is also 0. Again, we get a 0 over 0 indeterminate form, right? So now the interesting question is, how do we handle these cases? Well, that brings us to the L'Hopital's rule. So let's look at the following version of L'Hopital's rule. If my f of a and g of a are both 0. If f and g are differentiable, right, then if you're taking a limit of f of x divided by g of x, then it is the same as the taking the limit of f prime of x divided by g prime of x, okay, under this condition that f of a and g of r are both zero. Okay, uh, I don't want to prove the theorem. But I will give you uh, the idea. Here's the uh, idea of the proof. Is uh, so. Let's start with x goes to a f of x over g of x. Well, what can I do here? Since f of a and g of a are both zero, I can stick in minus f of a here, and here I can stick in g of a because they are zero right so it's the limit doesn't change what next well what i can do is i can split this as f of x minus f of a divide by x minus a and do the same here uh, g of x minus g of a divided by x minus a right so i'm dividing both numerator and denominator by the same factor x minus a then nothing is going to change, right? Again, I'm letting x go to a, x go to a. Well, wait a second, so what is this? Well, at the top, it's nothing but the derivative of f at a, and here at the bottom, I have the derivative of g, right, at a. So, I mean, that would be a very nice proof if we knew that those two derivatives exist, right? This f prime of a and g prime of a. Then we will be done. Uh, but anyway, so this is this is the the intuition behind uh, the L'Hopital, right? How you would sort of convert 
um, f of f over g to the uh, derivative of f prime over uh, g prime. Let's do some examples. All right, 3x minus sine x over x. So first, we need to check, right? If you let x equal to 0, this becomes like 0 over 0, right? So this is indeterminate form. Let's simply, sim simply use if in the form. So which means I can apply the L'Hopital, right? So this means I can apply L'Hopital. So let's write shorthand L for the L'Hopital. Then this is x goes to 0. Here, 3x minus uh, sine x derivative. Here, x derivative. So I'm taking the derivative of the numerator and denominator separately, right? I'm not applying quotient rule. So then what, what, what do we get here? Well, limit as x goes to 0. At the top, I'll get 3 minus cos x. At the bottom, I get 1. Now, if you let x go to 0, what is this? Well, this is 3 minus cosine 0. Cosine 0 is 1, so this is going to give us 2. You see, initially, I get 0 over 0. So I didn't say that, OK, 0 over 0, it's not defined, etc. right? I didn't say it. I just applied L'Hopital. And as a result of L'Hopital, in fact, this limit is approaching to 2, right? OK, another. Um, you might remember uh, such uh, problems that uh, we we did already. Uh, so one one so so before I apply L'Hopital, let's let's do the following. So I I could do uh, the rational rationalizing the numerator, right? I can uh, multiply by square root one plus x plus one and divide by the same factor. Then at 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 the at the top. I get uh, the square of square root 1 plus x minus 1 squared. It's going to be 1 plus x minus 1 divided by x times this 1 plus x in, in, in square root plus 1, right? So then what we see is this 1, 1 cancel. So uh, here I'm, I'm left with x. Then this x is cancel, right? So x is cancel. So I'm left with... Um, just 1 over square root of 1 plus x plus 1. If you let x go to 0, this goes to 1 over 2, right? So that's the answer. But let's try with L'Hopital and see if we get 1 half, right? So let's now see. But first, again, we need to check if we can apply the L'Hopital, right? Well, um, so what, what is this? If you let x go to 0, the, the top goes to uh, 1 square root of 1 minus 1 divided by 0. So this is 0 over 0. So that's uh, indeterminate, indeterminate form, right? So which means I can apply the L'Hopital. Well, let's apply the L'Hopital. So if you apply the L'Hopital, what do we get? Limit as x goes to 0. Uh, I need to take the derivative of the uh, numerator. I need to take the derivative of the denominator. So, what is the derivative of square root of 1 plus x? Well, it's 1 over 2, 1 plus x, right? The derivative of 1 is uh, 0 and divide by 1. So so I'm, I'm essentially left with this term, right? Now, if you let x go to 0, this uh, in, the, the term inside of the square root goes to uh, 1. So in fact, I get 1 over 2, 1 half, right? OK, uh, one more. Again, let's quickly do it. If you let x go to 0, we see that it's, it is 0 over 0. So this is the indeterminate form, right? So it, you, you, we always need to check. We always need to check. So then let's take the derivative of the of the denominator, derivative of the, the numerator and denominator. So here I get 1 minus cos x. Here I get uh, 3x squared. Well, uh, what is this? If, if you let x go to 0, this uh, numerator goes to zero. Denominator also goes to zero. Again, it's in the same form. So it means let's apply the L'Hopital one more time, right? So here I applied L'Hopital. I'm applying L'Hopital again, right? So if we apply L'Hopital again, what do we get? So uh, derivative of 1 minus cos x is uh, sine x, right? It's sine x. Here I get uh, uh, 6x, right? Well, what is this? Again, this is 0 over 0, right? This is again 0 over 0. So you apply L'Hopital one more time. You get uh, uh, derivative of sine is cos x. Derivative of 6x is 6. Now if you let x go to 0, cos x goes to 1. 
6 goes to 6, so this is 1 over 6. You see, so after 3 uh, times applying the L'Hopital, we finally arrive at 1 over 6 as a limit. L'Hopital is very powerful. Uh, it can be applied in many situations. However, we need to be careful. Right? So the first caution is we always need to check if we are in the indeterminate form. If it's not in the term form, you cannot simply apply. I mean, you cannot simply take the derivative numerator and denominator and then take them. It's not going to work. Here's an example. Let's say that I, I, I want to take limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x plus 1. You say, okay, let's say apply L'Hopital, we get a limit as x goes to 0. Take the derivative of the numerator, which gives us cos x. Take the derivative of the denominator, which gives us 1. Now, if you take the limit, this is simply cos 0, so this is 1. No, it's not, right? It's not. Why? Because if you let x go to 0, right? If you let x go to 0, the numerator goes to 0, the denominator goes to 0 plus 1. It's not 0 over 0. It's 0 over 1, so this is perfectly fine. So it's a 0 over 1, this is simply 0. So this is the right limit. So this is the limit, right? Limit is not 1, it's 0. So we have to be careful. Another remark is, uh, I already mentioned this, uh, so when you apply the L'Hopital, it's not like applying the quotient rule. When we apply L'Hopital, it means I, I take the derivative of the numerator separately, and then I take the derivative of the denominator separately. I'm not applying the quotient rule, right? So what do I mean? Here. Let's say that I, I'm taking x goes to 0, sine of x over x, right? We already saw the sine of x over x is 1, right, before. We, we did it at geometric proof. But here, this is 0 over 0, so uh, so this is like a 0 over 0, so I can apply the L'Hopital, I get limit as x goes to 0, this is a derivative of uh, sine, derivative of uh, x, so I get, uh, here I get cos x, here I get 1, so if you let x go to 0, this is simply 1, because cos 0 is, right? So this is correct, this is fine, this is fine. Uh, you might okay so this is here's here's the mistake this is the the common mistake is they say uh, yes they, they realize that they need to apply the L'Hopital right they say okay yes this is this applied L'Hopital but then what they do is they take the derivative of everything they just take the derivative of everything if you do this, what happens? So you need to apply the quotient rule, right? So here I'm applying quotient rule. This is derivative of sine, which is cos x, times the x, minus sine of x, times the derivative of x, which is 1, divided by x square, right? So, uh, and and you, you can you can proceed from here, but uh, it's not going to work. Uh, well, okay, so if you, if you let x go to 0, uh, this is still 0 or 0 in some form, but then maybe you keep applying L'Hopital, you, you arrive something. But this is wrong, okay? So this is this is not how you apply. This is, this is wrong. So don't, don't when you apply the L'Hopital, don't apply the quotient rule. Well, um, so we discussed the indeterminate form 0 over 0. However, there are other indeterminate forms like infinite over infinite. So it might happen, for example, if I let limit x goes to infinite, x square here it's x square plus 5x etc right so this is like an infinite over infinite case right uh, another occasion could be like infinite times the, the zero so you might have like limit uh, as x goes to could be infinite and here i might have like x square divide times one over uh, one plus let's say the x right something like this well, it's like infinite over infinite, but uh, it's it could be different. But anyway, so this is like an infinite times uh, the zero case, if you like. And another occasion is uh, infinite minus infinite. So you might have something like x goes to infinite. Here you might have x square minus square root of x, right? So in this occasion, you get like infinite minus infinite in term form. So nice question is, how do we apply the L'Hopital in these occasions? Well, for the first one, uh, there is no problem. There is no problem. In fact, uh, this is the version of the L'Hopital says the following. If you get uh, infinite over infinite, then you simply 
uh, take the derivative of the numerator, take the derivative of the uh, denominator if they exist, and then take the limit. So this is exactly the same as 0 over 0 case, right? However, we have to be careful with, with uh, the infinite times 0 and the uh, infinite minus infinite, right? So what happens on an infinite times 0? You cannot say that it's 0, you cannot say that it's infinite. So this is like in eternal form. And if you subtract infinite from infinite, do they cancel out and this becomes 0? So we have to be careful with these um, indeterminate forms. Now let's do some examples. So in A, what do we get? If you let x go to pi half, this is going to be secant uh, pi half, this is 1 over cosine, so this is 1 over 0. So this is like infinite. 1 over tangent, again, tangent blows up at pi half, so this is again infinite. So this is like an infinite over infinite case, right? So we can apply the L'Hopital, right? So L'Hopital gives us what? Limit as x goes to pi half. You take the derivative of secant, which is secant x times the tangent x. Uh, you take the derivative of 1 plus tangent x, which becomes uh, secant square x. So secant x and secant square x cancel. You, you get uh, x goes to pi half. Here, what is tangent? Tangent is uh, sine x over cosine of x. Here, you left with secant x, which is 1 over cosine of x. So we see that cos x cancel. You get sine of x. And... Uh, what is the limit of sine of x as x goes to pi half? Well, this is sine of pi half, which is 1, right? Let's look at the b. If you let x go to infinite, this ln x goes to infinite, square root of x goes to infinite. So this is again infinite over infinite. So again, we say, okay, by from the L'Hopital, uh, this is equivalent to taking the derivative of ln of x. What is the derivative of ln of x? It's 1 over x. What is the derivative of 2? Uh, times square root of x, well, this is 1 over square root of x, right? So this uh, 2 is cancelled. All right, uh, what can I do here? Well, I could write this as, uh, so I can multiply 1 over x by the reciprocal of uh, 1 over square root of x, which is square root of x. So you get square root of x uh, over x. If you like, you can also cancel this out. Uh, you get 1 over square root of x. But then if x goes to infinite, this goes to 1 over infinite, which is zero all right how about the third one again this is e a x goes to uh, infinite x square goes to infinite so this is again infinite over infinite so we say okay let's apply the L'Hopital so the L'Hopital gives us if you take the derivative of e x it's e x if you take the derivative of x square is 2x great but then this is again infinite over infinite right so you again apply the L'Hopital right so this is infinite over infinite case uh, so we apply L'Hopital, x goes to infinite, uh, the derivative of ex is again ex, but the derivative of 2x is just 2. Alright, so then what is next? Well, if you let x go to infinite, the numerator goes to infinite, denominator is just 2, so this is just infinite over 2, which is infinite, and that's the answer. Okay, now, let's consider the first one. If you let x go to infinite, we get infinite here, and the sine 1 over x is sine goes to sine 0, which is 0. So that's an indeterminate form. However, we cannot immediately apply the L'Hopital, because to be able to apply L'Hopital, we need to have 0 over 0, or it must be infinite over infinite, right? So we have to make it into that form before we go ahead with L'Hopital. Well, how can we sort of make it? Well, I can write it as follows. I can write x as 1 over x, right? I can take it to the denominator. And then, if you like, I can do the following, right? I can uh, make a change of variable. In, instead of x, I can consider uh, theta, which is 1 over x. So if x goes to infinite, theta goes to 0. Here I get sine theta over theta, right? We know that this is 1, but we can also apply L'Hopital here. Uh, so you take the derivative of sine, which is cosine of theta, take the derivative of theta, which is 1, so this is cosine of 0, which is 1, okay? Now let's look at the b. If you let x approach 0 from right, square root of x goes to uh, 0, ln x goes to minus infinite, uh, so this is again 0 times the infinite case, right? However, we, we want to put it into the a form where we can apply L'Hopital. So what do we do? Well, we can do the following. We can leave ln x uh, at the top, 
we can bring the square root of x to the denominator, right? 1 over square root of x. Okay, well, now if you let x go to infinite, what is this? This is uh, minus infinite divided by, so square root of x goes to 0, 1 over 0 goes to infinite. So this is infinite. Now we can apply L'Hopital, right? Uh, great, but before uh, applied L'Hopital, okay, let, let's go ahead and apply L'Hopital. X uh, goes to 0 from right. Here I get uh, ln x uh, derivative. Here, let, let's rewrite this as uh, x to the minus 1 half derivative, right? So x goes to 0 from right. Derivative of ln x is 1 over x. Derivative of x to the minus 1 half is minus 1 half times x to the minus 3 halves, right? That's the power rule. Okay, uh, now we can see that there will be some simplifications, cancellations, 1 over x. So uh, if, you, if you take the reciprocal of the denominator, uh, I get uh, minus 2 times x to the 3 over 2. So x to the 3 over 2 and x somehow cancel. Uh, I, I will be left with uh, minus 2 times square root of x, right? Now if you let x go to 0, this goes, this becomes 0. All right, now we have 1 over sine x minus 1 over x. If x goes to 0, both of them goes to uh, infinite plus minus. So this is like an infinite over minus infinite, right? It's an indeterminate form. However, it's not uh, the form that we like uh, as 0 over 0 or infinite over infinite where we can apply L'Hopital. So we, we need to attempt to bring it into one of the those forms. Well, what can we do? Well, I can simply bring to the common denominator, right, x times sine of x. Then I get x minus sine of x here. If you let x go to 0, you can see that this is 0 over 0. So this is in a different form. Hence, I can apply the L'Hopital. And if you apply the L'Hopital, so the derivative of the numerator is 1 minus cos x. Derivative of the denominator, well, it's a product. So I need to apply the product. Well, 1 times the sine x plus x times the cos x. Okay, now what? If you let x go, to x go to 0, I still have 0 over 0, right? So which means I can go ahead and apply the L'Hopital one more time. Now, in this occasion, the numerator becomes sine of x. For the denominator, well, the derivative of sine is cos x plus what is uh, the derivative of cos x times cos x? Well, this is 1 times cos x plus x times the derivative of cos x is minus sine of x, right? Now, if you let if you let x go to 0, my uh, numerator goes to 0, denominator goes to cosine 0 plus cosine 0 plus 0, so this is 1 plus 1 plus 0, so this is not an indeterminate form, it's just 0 over 2, which is 0, so that's the limit. Okay, other indeterminate form are 1 to the infinite. Why it's not uh, a determinate form, right? Uh, you might say, okay, you, you keep multiplying 1 infinite many times, it should be 1, right? Why this is, there is uh, any ambiguity? Well, uh, remember we are dealing with limits, right? We are dealing with limits, so uh, our uh, base is, is, may not be 1, but it's approaching to 1, uh, and hence uh, it's not clear. And 0 to the 0, right? A number to the 0 is 1, 0 to the power is uh, 0, so is it 1 or 0? It is, again, there is, it's not clear, and the infinite to the 0 is again, another indeterminate form. But as I said, I mean, we would like to find it, put it into uh, the form that we like, right? Uh, 0 over 0 or infinite over infinite, then we can apply. In, as, as, it's, uh, as it's given, we cannot apply. So one, one, one trick that we can do is uh, the, the fact that if you have a function, we can write it as e to the ln of that function, right? This is like taking ln of both sides. Whichever method you like, you, you can do it. Okay, so let's do some examples. So this is uh, one of the famous uh, formulas that gives us this Euler constant 2.7, etc. So let, let's derive it, right? Let's derive it. Well, uh, 
x goes to 0 from right. Uh, we can write it as e to the power ln of this function 1 plus x to the 1 over x, right? Uh, from where we can we we have is e to the so 1 over x comes to the uh, to the front so you get uh, ln 1 plus x divided by x right okay then what well uh, from the previous slide we know that this is here we can sort of take the bring this limit to the exponent right uh, ln 1 plus x over x well what is this uh, as x goes to 0 uh, ln 1 plus x goes to 0 the denominator goes to 0 so this is in determined form right so I can say this is like a 0 over 0 so I can apply the L'Hopital to the exponent so this is e to the limit x goes to 0 take the derivative of ln 1 plus x it is 1 over 1 plus x take the derivative of x it's 1 now if you let x go to 0 this simply goes to e, e to the 1 which is e right let's look at another example so what is this if you let x go to infinite this is uh, infinite to the 1 over infinite right so this is like infinite to the 0 so that's an indeterminate form okay so what do we do well as in the previous uh, case I could write it as e to the ln x to the 1 over x, right? So this becomes e to the limit as x goes to infinite ln x over x, right? Now, what can I say about this? Well, this is uh, infinite over infinite. So this is like infinite over infinite. That's an indeterminate form. So it means I can apply the log at all. And then what do I get? Limit as x goes to infinite. Well, derivative of ln x is 1 over x, derivative of x is 1. So this goes to uh, e to the 1 over infinite, which is e to the 0, right? So this is 1. Okay? 